Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the Forge Fathers from Mantic Games. And these ones were not actually sent to me, I bought these an age ago and have only now decided, go on, let's do something fun with them. Now some of you have asked me in the past how I would paint uh, Imperial Clone Troopers, sorry not Imperial, Republic Clone Troopers, and the short answer is, well, pretty much like this. Now the methods here and the results are pretty simple. Reason being is I want to get models on the table as quickly as possible. So rather than painstakingly highlighting eight layers of white, let's do it with three. You know, let's do a shade and a dry brush and call it done. So as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now a quick note on the Forge Fathers. These are largely older kits. There have been a couple of really cool new ones released, the Artificers for Dead Zone 3rd Edition. But these guys are a little on the older side as far as Mantix kits go. And while I have been pretty complimentary towards Mantix plastic in the you know, previous videos, these ones, I gotta admit, were a bit of a bear to assemble. There are no sort of guiding lugs for the front and back of the torso, so you have to line it up manually. Same too with the body, it's a little bit of guesswork. The second one I assembled, this fella here, I found much easier because I had a better eye for how the kit should go together, but the first one was an exercise. <laughs> it really did take a bit of work to figure out what I was doing. Uh, if you are experienced with scale modeling, you know, you're not going to have much of a problem. It's a logical progression of parts, but if it's your first kits or you're not wholly confident in assembling stuff, these guys, these older figures, are a little bit more challenging. You know, not so much so that I would swear off them entirely, but it is something worth pointing out so that you're aware of it. But once he's assembled, and I've picked out a couple of parts which I thought made this guy look like a squad leader. It turns out these are the heavy weapon shoulder pads, but I don't care, he looks cool. <laughs> now I've given him a primer spray of Gracia. Uh, you could start from white here instead, but I have tended to find that when painting white from Gracia, like we're going to, that little bit of sort of cool undertone, first of all, is going to help a bit with our look. Now I want a really cool, crisp white. So for this, I'm going to start with Apothecary White, which is really more of a slimy grey kind of colour from Citadel. It's got a little bit of blue in it. And we're going to apply this over the whole miniature. You'll see it collects pretty quickly. Uh, but do make sure that you're working it into the recesses because if it doesn't get in there, they're going to kind of glow by comparison when you've finished. Now the inspiration for this actually came from the Enterprise. Uh, my other half, we were talking about what colors, you know, that uh, what does sci-fi look like these days, I asked her. And she said, well, look at what we think is high tech in each era. Do you remember IMAX? IMAX, that was, those were the things. You know, little white facing computers with a colored section at the back, they were cool. And they looked like the future. Uh, but I got thinking a little more and I was like, well, what about the Enterprise? That's a really good comparison. If we look at the bridge of each ship, you know, back with Kirk's original Enterprise, you had this sort of submarine looking beastie, which nonetheless had all of these cool sci-fi trappings and bright lights and such. Then you skip on forward to late 80s when the Enterprise D goes out and suddenly the future looks like cool, calm and beige. <laughs> uh, but skipping sort of all the way back through again, you know, if we look at Strange New Worlds or Discovery, the future looks like, well, clean and crisp, like a hospital for fruit, to borrow a line from Team Fortress. So that's what I'm going for here. Now after his thorough dunking, I've left him for about 20 minutes for that to dry and to settle. And on his back here is probably the best place to see this. You see how the, the contrast kind of draws up and collects towards the center of flat panels? It's an interesting effect, one that I actually quite like, but can be a little hard to control. Either way, I do like that uh, just off white finish. Now on the tabletop, you'll find white is a real tricky one to get right, for lack of a better term. So we've gone darker than white, and this is going to form the basis of what we're doing, but next we're going to dry brush. You could highlight with some off-white or some pure white, whatever color you like, the edges of the panels, 
And in doing that, that would look really cool. Like if you've got the patience and the time to do it, then my goodness, a nice crisp panel line will look fantastic. But I don't have that kind of time, so out comes a dry brush. So I am using Prax City White and one of my big old makeup brushes here. Nice soft bristles are going to be a big help here. So starting on an area which you can't really go wrong with, like his shoulder pad here, you see passing over that area a few times, I get a nice sharp white edge, but the rest of the armor, let's go across his helmet, uh, the rest of the armor maintains its shading and depth. So from table distance, this is going to look much more like white. Like if we get a look at the top of his helmet, that is just, ah, oh, smashing. Nice and quick to do. So I'm going to go around now and dry brush the whole miniature. I've painted white a few different ways on the channel over the years, and this is probably one of my favorites. It isn't the fastest, and it's also not the nicest looking, if I'm perfectly honest, but it's really nice for how much work it takes. It's, I love it. Anyhow, we're going to move on, and you'll see there are some areas on these dudes where there is an undersuit visible. For this, if you wanted to stick to Citadel products, you could use Corvus Black, but I am going to use this as Vallejo German Grey, and you'll see why if you haven't watched me use this before. Because it covers like nobody's business. So important here that you take your time, like really slow down with this stuff, and if you do struggle to reach an area, Flip your miniature, approach from different angles. You know, remember you are manipulating a three-dimensional object. But anywhere that I want to be black undersuit, I'm going to paint this in now. If you make any mistakes, a little bit of, what is it, Corax white will normally help clean those up. But really take your time, I'd suggest. Slow down here and you'll have a better time of it. That did make me quite nervous to paint, I don't mind admitting. And I realize now I'm basically painting a Stormtrooper, so let's lean into that a little bit. But there are some areas which look like leather straps, you know, buckles and what have you, that are holding elements of his gear on. And this is actually quite an easy way to get a little bit of warmth into the color scheme. So I have here Vallejo's Flat Brown. And again, this is very similar to Mournfang Brown if you want to stick to Citadel lines. But in the same way that I started with Contrast and... Uh, a dry paint, you know, as the best tool for the job. Uh, these Vallejo paints, you know, they are pretty bloody good at what they do, so this is why I swap to them when I want coverage. So, not to rag on one manufacturer over another, but, yeah, expand your lines. Collect more than one. You might find something you like. You'll see from the front that there isn't actually very much of that. If we spin them around, you can see a little bit of the extra work there. You could leave those in black, to be quite honest. I just think they're a nice little flourish, and they do let us get some extra color on. I'm turning now to just black, and I'm going to black in his pistol. Uh, this is going to look a little different to the undersuit, because it lacks that tiny wee bit of blue-black. And I am going to... Yeah, I'm probably going to dry brush this later to finish it off. But now, black will do. As well... I will switch to a smaller brush and pick out some of these little roundel sections because they look quite cool, just a bit stark and black. So as well as the little round dealies holding on his shoulder pads, I've given him this kind of moustache looking thing. The front of the beards for the regular guys are molded so that they are reminiscent of beards. Uh, the front of the helmets, rather. Uh, but this fella's got this neat little curved thing, and so I'm going to try and make that look kind of like a piece of a communications equipment, but we'll see how it turns out. I have now some lead belcher, and I am going to now apply this to, first of all, this little dealy bopper here, and any bits that I want to be silver later on. So finally, I'm going to apply something metallic to the model, and I actually saw a really interesting example, somebody else's paint job on these. They also went for white armor. And they were mentioning how they'd chosen something like that because they didn't want uh, anything that would deliberately lean towards dwarves. And I thought that was quite interesting. They didn't want old school, you know, oh, it's just dwarves in space. They wanted these guys to look more like their own entity. And as a result, they strayed away from reds and browns and you know, typical fantasy colors. I thought that was quite cool. So I'm 
going to steal that. I'm going to lift that concept because it does tie in a little to how I want these guys to look. There are quite a few little spots and details, like I've given him uh, Vox pickup sort of things on the side of his helmet. Uh, these sections on his boots look like they would be powered, presumably to give him better stepping power? I don't know. <laughs> but there are a few little bits where an extra bit of uh, silver is not going to go amiss. In order to paint the haft of his hammer, I have here Galvorbank Red, and this is one of the... I say new, it's relatively recent, it's not hugely new. Uh, colors from Citadel. And this is a lovely, this is really a deep purple actually, it's not a red at all. Uh, any color of course will do here. Um, I'm just looking at a way to get a little bit more color on this dude without being overpowering. Now the time has come, I can't put this off anymore, I have to make a decision on what color I'm going to paint his markings. Now, Mrs. Sledge, bless her, she makes fun of me all the time because I paint everything red. And it's probably a bit true, so instead I'm going to go with blue, which will look lovely. I have here, this is techless blue, but the blue used doesn't really matter. Any middle, quite saturated blue will look nice. I've thinned this down a bit, and what I'm going to try and do is to paint a stripe following... There is a little curved section in the front of his knee pad here, which I will probably do off camera. Um, on the box art, you'll see these guys have got the, the whole knee pad blocked in, and I don't think I want to do that. But I am going to pick a few areas where I want this nice, rich blue, and Teclas blue is really quite a nice blue. It's a lovely blue, I really like Teclas blue, but he does look like a little clone trooper now. Uh, as well as those panels, I haven't done much on his back, but a few little details on the front, and I painted in a little bit shoddily in some cases, these little stripes on the side of his helmet. I think they'll just add a bit. I have now some Mechanicus Standard Grey, and well, it's a rock that I'm going to paint, so you pick whatever colour you would like your rock to be. And while I don't want to play up the fantasy elements of the miniature, a little bit of Balthazar Gold I think is going to improve the look of the hammer. So not very much of this. Now over the black undersuit and some of the silver bits, I'm going to apply a little bit of non-oil. You don't really need very much of this at all. Don't worry too much if you do get it on the black, of course, that's not going to matter. Uh, but for areas like his boots, these little sections for example, and around the back of his legs, go nuts. You'll see that we haven't really gone crazy with that, and as a result, like particularly on these little sections on his back here, which are still drying, you can see we've managed to get a nice sharp black edge to some of those silver details really easily. It's important you're using a nice fine tip brush there. Anyhow, I have now Agrax Earthshade because I can't bloody well leave enough alone. Let's go ahead and I'm going to apply this all over his axe. Axe? His hammer? Good. <laughs> this is why I'm not a lumberjack. <laughs> and the haft as well. Now while those are drying, I've gone ahead and gotten some Ayandan Yellow and Contrast Medium. And I've mixed these up on my palette, roughly half and half, maybe just a tiny bit more medium. Now I've added this, I've got one of my small layer brushes here, because I want plenty of control. And I'm just going to paint this into the eye socket on each side. That's nice and quick, and looks reasonably good. You could also paint in with a little bit of area yellow and then highlight the edges, but we're looking for relatively quick. What I have now is a little bit of Fenrisian Grey, and I'm going to highlight some of the blue with this. You don't need to go overboard, but just a few little areas to sharpen up those edges will look pretty cool. Honestly, there's not a huge amount of that to do. I've got now a little bit of Dark Reaper, and we're going to use this to highlight some of the creases in the undersuit. Particularly this will look cool on the back of Knuckles and such as well. Now it's up to you, because Dark Reaper is quite dark. Ironically, it will lighten a little as it dries, which is kind of the opposite of what most of these paints will do. But at any rate... Really now, this is just a case of me having fun. You could quite happily skip this. That's quite subtle on camera, but it is a little bit more marked in person. If you wanted to take it higher, you could use a little bit of Thunderhawk blue over the top there, but I don't think you're going to need to. 
What I have is one of my little makeup brushes as a small dry brush, and I'm going to use a tiny wee bit of Necron Compound, just lightly flicking along the edges of the hammer first to pick out some of that detail. And once I'm convinced I've got most of the paint off of my brush, I'm going to do the same and Necron Compound the edge of his pistol. And you'll see I've got, I've got so little on my brush, eh? It's important that you've got next to nothing. But as you do this, build up that color, and you'll get a neat battered gunmetal effect straight over black. Now I always really like how that looks. A little bit battered, and when we varnish it, it's going to be great. Now let me just get this fella in shot, because this is going to be important. I'm using now, this is Vallejo Model Air Chrome. Now, if you wanted to stick to Citadel, uh, here, Stormhost Silver would be a good alternative. But watch this, watch this. This is so bright. This, wah! <laughs> Sorry, try not to laugh. You want to use only the tiniest bit of this to really catch the edges of those silver details, because when it does, my goodness, that's going to glow. Now, if ever you need a silver which is going to look like a sci-fi silver, which almost glows and looks white. There it is. Chrome. Shiny and chrome. What I'm going to do is take this fellow outside now, and I am going to hit him with a satin varnish. I'm going to use Munitorum Spray from Citadel. Now, reason being, ordinarily you may see that I quite like using a matte finish, but for these sci-fi figures, just a semi-gloss and a little bit of shine to them is ordinarily what I prefer. So then I'll pop base on them, and I will stick the recipe for the base in the description. Let's get a look at what that looks like when he's all finished. And there at last, our Forge Father is complete. Now, I actually really enjoyed doing this. Uh, once the horrors of assembly were in the past, the kits themselves are really nice. I dig the design. There's something neat about them that is... A little reminiscent of how Citadel would go on to develop the Caradron Overlords line, in that they were something familiar, but with their own spin. And these guys don't just look like dwarfs in space, they're very clearly inspired by dwarfs, but the armor design and their weaponry and everything feels a little different to what you see in a lot of dwarf in space media. Deep Rock Galactic comes to mind. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the lovely patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support really is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.